All right, guys, I watched the Human Rights Committee in Parliament yesterday talking about what's going on and asking the questions that we have been asking for months. Well, some of them anyway. You know, the main one, though, what about our human rights? That is something many of us have been sitting there wondering what is going on and indeed where the actual human rights lawyers are. Now, I will give a quick shout out to Subject Access for bringing this to my attention because despite me looking at Parliament's website daily, I actually missed it. He messaged me on Twitter asking if I had seen it, which I had not, so we have him to thank for this video. His channel will be linked down below for you to check out, along with a link to the full committee stream on Parliament TV yesterday. Now for this video we're going to look at a bit where the committee member Joanna Cherry asked how these regulations have affected our human rights to protest, which is not only a human right but is also a common law right and still 100% legal. There is literally nothing stopping us protesting regardless of what the old bill and media run around saying, because as we have called out and so have many others they have confused regulations with guidance, the police are guilty of this over many things. Now I highly doubt that you're going to hear about this in the media and the BBC as usual will be missing it in action, likely on some northern European ski slope telling us how racist it is there. But for this video we have two lawyers here speaking about protests and the way these laws have been applied. This is an extremely important video because it can help people discover what rights they actually have. So share it around and let people know this government is breaching their human rights while also using the wrong laws to do it. If one of the lawyers is right, then the entire shit show is actually unlawful. This is why we need court cases flying against the government for this shit. If only the average person could actually afford to fight for their own rights in court, hey? Now, here are the clips I've taken from the two-hour parliamentary committee meeting that you should see. Make sure to let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, Kirsty, I was very interested in what you said there about the these regulations being made under the Public Health Act, but they're not really there for public order. And that sort of links into my question. I want to ask about the impact of these regulations, uh, the restrictions on people's right to peaceful protest and people's right to freedom of expression and freedom of assembly. Do you think the um, res these restrictions have been reasonable? And do you think the law, as so insofar as it impacts on our rights under Article 10 and Article 11 of the ECHR, has been accessible and foreseeable, uh, having regard to the frequent changes in the law and the sometimes conflicting messages coming from the police and government, and thinking back to the Black Lives Matter protests last summer? I think, firstly, the uh, the, the has uh, take taking your last part of your question first. Uh, the, the the laws have been uh, completely inaccessible and opaque, and we've seen that not only through the statistics, probably from the CPS, of so many wrongful prosecutions where nobody's suggesting that these are deliberate and malicious. They people are just confused, and that goes all the way to those who are sitting in positions as being district judges, and similarly with the fixed penalty notices. So the law is being wrongly applied, which shows that it's not accessible. The regulations now are uh, probably around 130 pages long. They are not even linked specifically quite often to the guidance. Even the lawyers get confused uh, going through them. And so they, uh, and when you look at laws that are inaccessible, what that means is that they themselves might be unlawful because in order for a law to be lawful, it has to be clear and accessible so that people will understand if they have committed an offence. And I think that's the territory we're in now. The amendments have been uh, so often and uh, in such a uh, confusing way with guidance being mixed with uh, amendments to the law that people no longer know where they stand and perhaps some, frankly, uh, have given up on, 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 uh, on trying to, to abide in some way. In relation specifically to protests, another confusion here, of course, was that we were seeing, uh, for example, the Black Lives um, Black Lives Matter protests, uh, and uh, and uh, people were confused there because the regulations were entirely silent about protest. And so it seemed very confusing that there was uh, restrictions on who could meet with who outside. Uh, and yet uh, there was uh, thousands of people gathering in, in this way. Uh, and then there was a specific exemption brought into the regulations to um, uh, protect rights to protest. So there was exemptions around restrictions on right to protest, and then that was removed. So we're in a position where it's now silent again. 
none of that is satisfactory. Uh, and uh, restrictions on protest uh, are, are potentially will have, have a chilling effect. And uh, particularly with a pandemic, uh, there was a lot of frustration, a lot of upset and um, a, 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 a lot of anguish. And people need to be able to express that. It obviously needs to be done in a way where people are safe. And this comes back to the need to focus on guidance, uh, to focus on public health advice which is what the guidelines are, and just split them apart from having um, anything, any connection with criminal law, which is where they have been placed. If they were just headed, these are the public health guidelines, and we are recommending you follow them. And then a separate section, here is the law. If you do this, uh, these are potential consequences, uh, then that would assist. Obviously, Article 10 and Article 11 are qualified rights, and you're, obviously, you, you're, you're weighing up there, as, um, as, as, uh, as, as Ms. Ms. Harmon has pointed out, you're weighing up there in, in terms of um, the absolute right on, on, on protecting of life. But there's absolutely no, no reason why protests cannot uh, take place with um, sufficient safeguards around them. And in fact, when you look at what the regulations allow, they now allow um, uh, unlimited numbers within church services, for example, uh, certainly under the tier four. Uh, and so there's also a lot of illogicality around where the red lines are drawn and where there's elasticity over what people can do. And I think that's what's led to a lot of the frustration that people don't see the logical connection with the public health in a lot of lot of occasions. But we, it's very important that we obviously protect our um, rights to free speech and protest and, um, and gatherings. So I'm mindful of the time, so I'll, I'll try and uh, do it as briefly as possible. Kirsty's touched on uh, the deterrent effect that uh, inconsistency uh, and uh, uh, lack of clarity in, in the rules might deter people from getting involved in protests. And certainly, anecdotally, uh, there's a great deal of uh, evidence there. The other side of it, of course, is when is that I mean, firstly, protest has never been banned. When it's been silent, uh, you know, protest is still, of course, allowed as common law right, uh, enhanced as it were by by the Human Rights Act, um, and the. Police have a duty to facilitate protest uh, in, in, you know, in, those, in these circumstances, regardless of, of what the regulations say. Um, the, the issue that sort of has become very problematic is how restrictions are enforced, what restrictions are decided, um, and how the police go about doing that. We've talked about the four E's, the uh, engage, explain, encourage, enforce, or, there's a fundamental flaw there if officers don't actually understand what the regulations are. Who are you engaging with? Why? What are you explaining? What are you encouraging them to do? And, and ultimately, of course, when you're taking enforcement action, you know, are you actually sure or do you have a reasonable belief that somebody is acting contrary to the guidance? With the way the oh, sorry, with the, with the regulations, there's 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 the obvious slip: the guidance, the regulations. The, you know, that, is, that has been a major issue and some forces have treated protest as being banned except during that time when uh, protest was specifically exempt um, and forces have also just got it wrong in general um, and not to talk about sort of uh, our own cases but uh, a case I had uh, in August prior to the new uh, regulations in September uh, indicated that the Met Police had not really understood the regulations at all over the over the summer of, of the protests um, when they threatened to um, arrest a, a client of mine who was seeking to organize protest because they said he wasn't exempt when actually he quite clearly was of which they uh, um, eventually uh, accepted um, and not to talk about sort of uh, our own cases but uh, a case I had uh, in August prior to the new uh, regulations in September uh, indicated that the Met Police had not really understood the regulations at all over the over the summer of, of the protests um, when they threatened to um, arrest a, a client of mine who was seeking to organize protest because they said he wasn't exempt when actually he quite clearly was of which they uh, um, eventually uh, accepted after uh, after um, pre-litigation 
So, you know, without uh, an understanding of what the regulations are, the, the police shouldn't be trying to enforce restrictions on, on protests. Protests that are, you know, adhere to the guidance at least of, you know, hands face space as it were, should not have interference at all. Um, and uh, you know, the police should be, because it's been, you know, their duty to facilitate uh, forever, as it were, um, and it's certainly been in the manuals for the last decade plus, that duty to facilitate, should be adept at facilitating that process and focusing on public order, because they're not experts in public health. And unless there's an obvious breach of it, they shouldn't be getting involved. But it, it, that inconsistency across the country, different forces, has, has certainly been a problem. And I think that's why you've seen different approaches at different times. Uh, so, it, it, you know, if we're, if we're going forward, we have this, there needs to be greater clarity about it, but there also needs to be an understanding from the police that, that to facilitate. Sorry.